Today's intro is sponsored by James Marshall at Marshall11. James? Dak, 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 Bradley, Dak. Bradley, Dak, 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 Bradley, Dak, 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 Bradley, Dak, 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 Bradley, Dak. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time looking back at Blackburn Rovers' 1-0 win over Bolton at the Macron Stadium. And we'll get to that in just one second. Now, if you're new to the channel, smash your subscribe button. Get you back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We've got it all here under one roof. And it was, of course, Bradley Dack. And yes, as you can see in my bizarro intro, that it is all down to him. Well, it wasn't all down to him. It was actually a beautiful, beautiful goal. Um... Well, it was a beautiful build-up to the goal. There was uh, excellent work by Casey Palmer in the middle of the field to create the goal, basically creating the goal, holding back, uh, hold up play, excellent, fancy footwork, amazing. Sets up Reed, who has a bit of a crack at the, at the goal, ends up going to Rothwell, who also has a crack at the goal. But, of course, it falls to the man who will not miss, especially from that angle, uh, Bradley Dak, who was the one and only goal of a game which was very, very... Oh, I don't know, lopsided. It was lopsided in the first half. We were definitely the better of the two sides in the first half. But in the second half, Bolton really came to us and, st and started to have a go. And they were very, very unlucky, to be honest with you, to come away with absolutely nothing. Uh, they did have a controversial penalty call uh, towards the back end of the game, which was later retracted by the referee. Because, um, you know, I, 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 cause at, at first... I thought it can't be Daryl Lanahan again. Four games running uh, to give away a penalty. So very, very uh, uh, glad that that went in our favour today. But um, yeah, yeah. Bold, bold selection by uh, Mowbray to play Reed and Rodwell in the middle of the park. We'll talk about the, the, the lineup in just a second. But that was, that was, for me, a breath of fresh air because obviously Evans and Smallwood are good and they do what they do. And they also had a, a pretty much 30, 45 minutes uh, of the second half. As, they, as we try to, to get a hold of the game. Um, but anyway, let's take a look at some of the, the statistics down the bottom here. Uh, Bolton had 13 shots on the night compared to our seven. They also dominate possession 52%, uh, or more, more like 53% uh, compared to our 47%. They also had a better success of uh, passing with 71% of their passes going to their intended uh, target. We only had 68. Uh, we, uh, they dribbled uh, seven times to our four. They won the aerial battles 42 to our 27. And they also uh, had more tackles than us, 16 to our 15. They also had more corners, seven to three. And we were dispossessed more than they were, 13 to to eight. Now let's take a look at, the, of course, the starting 11s. First and foremost, with uh, the hosts, Bolton. Uh, Matthews was in goal. Grounds, Wita, Hobbs, and Olskowski looks a decent player. Buckley, Low. Uh, we all remember Jason Lowe, Otsimer, Williams, and Noon, and Josh McGuinness up front. Now, how about the Mighty Rovers? This is how they lined up. Ryan Gold, Williams, Mulgrew, Lenehan, Bennett, uh, Rodwell, and Rothwell, uh, Palmer, Reed, Dak, and of course, Big DG. And this is my uh, match ratings for the players. Ryan had an 8, Williams had a 6, uh, Mulgrew had a 7, Lenehan had an 8. Uh, Bennett had a 7, Palmer had a 7, uh, Rodwell had a 6, Rothwell had a 7, Reed had a 8, Dak had an 8, and Big DG had a 6. Now, um, yeah, Rodwell coming into his first league start for Rovers, and he got a match range for 6, so it was pretty decent. He wasn't, he didn't rip up the ground, and, you know, he, he was he was sturdy, he was steady, there was no, no frills, just, you know, a, a solid midfield, sort of defensive midfield debut or, or appearance for him. Rothwell ran his little socks off, tried to create stuff. Which was good. Def definitely a different uh, uh, perspective. Because uh, but usually we, when we have the two central midfielders, they're very defensive and they sit back a little bit. Rodwell was not that. He came forward a fair bit. Reed also on the right hand side. Um, again, offered a lot of energy, a lot of commitment, involved in a lot of stuff. And also in the second half, when he was forced to be on a wing back position, he also gave it his all as well. And of course, our utility man Elliot Bennett playing wherever you absolutely need him to play: left back, right back, mid mid midfield, up front, goalkeeper. Wherever Whatever you want, he's in there, and again, he turns out a decent performance with a with a seven. Big DG only gets a six just because uh, I don't think he had uh, too many efforts up front, but when he did, he, he was he was steady and again trying to create some link up play with with Bradley Dak, who of course was instrumental. And he gets the eight because of the goal, and but really, I think the man of the match goes for, for me goes to David Raya because once again, phenomenal world class saves. A uh, couple of Hollywood ones in there that he kind of threw in for a bit of flair, but uh, but definitely kept us in this game. With uh, definitely there was a couple that was on, uh, from the corner that could have uh, probably should have went in the back of the net. Anyways, take a look at them. The where the shots took place. Um, as you can see, we are the blue. Uh, we only had a handful of shots.
a couple of long range efforts as well. Um, but yeah, the the one that matters is the one that went in the back of the net. As for Bolton, they had a fair few, a couple of wild ones as well that, come, that, that amounted to nothing. Um, let's take a look at some more statistics down here. Uh, passes, they had more passes than us, 482 to our 437. Um, we cleared the ball. Well, they cleared more, more than we did. Um, 25 to their 20. Uh, they had more touches than we did, 706 to our 645. Um, what else they got in there? Um, uh, I think they committed more fouls than us, 14 to 11. Anyway, if you are a heat map person, take a look at the heat map. Here it is. Uh, a couple of red spots on the old Bolton side of things. So maybe that is down to Noon, uh, who was running his socks off for them. Raya has also got a bit of a red spot in the old goalkeeper zone for Rovers. So, um, but all in all, not a bad performance. Uh, it's one of those ones, you know. The come up on the calendar that the, the, the I predicted it was going to be a stodgy Ted Sven, and it was. Um, and and I, I had feelings there was going to be a red card or a penalty, and we nearly had that as well. But fortunately, it was kind of a moment of, of skill. I think, obviously, the, the the way the goal panned out for Rovers at the end was not necessarily you know, skillful, but it was it was a definitely a, a, a team goal, team build-up goal with Casey Palmer, Reed, and Roffo linking up nicely, and eventually coming out to, to deck to tap it on home. So, all in all, it was a... A workmanlike performance. This definitely wasn't one for the, the the replay book that you want to watch that back again. But uh, there's definitely areas that Mowbray has to check out. Uh, when we went for three at the back, because obviously in the second half, Bolton were coming to us and we kind of changed our uh, our setup a little bit. It didn't really offer us much going forward. So that's that's something I think that needs to be worked on and, and maybe tweaked severely because we we looked kind of kind of toothless going forward in the second half, and we were lucky that we only uh, that we came away with three points. Uh, what else needs to be worked on? Closing out games. It's uh, the past three or four games. Uh, we've the last 15 minutes has been very nervy. Uh, definitely not for the faint of heart. You know, especially if 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 something's on the line like uh, our uh, survival or uh, you know a spot further at the table perhaps or just you know three points on the line. It just hasn't been an easy. A bit of business for Rovers trying to close out games. So that's something that needs to be addressed and looked at. And maybe, you know, the time-wasting efforts are, are, are pretty lackluster uh, for, for Rovers at the moment. But anyway, that's just a little bit what I've had to say about the match. Now what you really want to hear is what the gaffer had to say shortly after the final whistle between Bolton and Blackburn Rovers. Um, oh, not very good performance, I would have to say. A bit disappointed in performance. I think the first quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, was what we'd worked on and planned for. But... Um, I think credit to them, they are a team that make life really difficult. If you go back to their last home fixture, the big Derby County, with 20 odd percent possession against Derby, uh, we know ourselves how, how good Derby are. So um, they're a team that make it really, really difficult for you, as they did for us today. But I thought, let's uh, take the points. Do you call it winning ugly? I'm not sure. You know, the spirit was there. I think that's what got us through. I've just said to them there, I talk a lot about the spirit of this team. and. And it was there on shore today, digging in, winning headers, getting second balls. We weren't fluent at all. I picked a team to try and be fluent today with Palmer and Rothwell and Dak with, um, and Rodwell and, and uh, Harrison Reed to be able to feed them players. Worked all right for a while. It was 20 odd minutes, it worked okay. But um, I thought the solidity that Evans brought and Smallwood brought later on was, uh, was important and, and it helped us get through and, and get the points. No, well, it won't matter. It's in the history books, 1-0. Um, we know we have to be better, and, and as you know, we have been better. We went to Stoke for 80 minutes and we're fantastic. So um, every game stands on its own two feet. The next challenge for us is Leeds United at home with 8,000 Leeds fans coming and um, a team that I saw play amazingly well at Hull recently, won 1-0, but uh, I know they drew today against a, you know, a fantastic Brentford team who we've already beaten at home, and so... That's just the next challenge for us and see how we get on. Well, listen, because it was Wednesday night, we didn't have much time to work on the grass, um, but we talked about it in the video room. We'd analysed some goals. It's been disappointing, to be honest. We've lost two goals in each of the last four games and um, it needed to stop if we were going to have any ambition of winning matches. So, um, so I thought they defended really well today. I thought we needed to go back to three three centre-halves in the second half because I thought we were, we were going to concede because they were starting to put a lot of balls and crosses in our box and they were pushing us back so um, just delighted for them to get a clean sheet to get a win it's great to see that spirit growing really results like today feed feed the, the beast if you want to call it the, you know if you want to give it a name they're um, 
their togetherness, their camaraderie, their spirit is, is at times you feel it's unbreakable really. And, and so does anybody moan and whinge when I left Evans and Smallwood and Bell out of the team today? No, they just, everybody's patting each other on the back, everybody's there together and, and that's part of our strength, I think. Yeah, I think so. And listen, I, I incorporate them, I, we talk about it really, it's not me writing on the board and saying this is it, get on with it, we talk about it. and. So whether we were going to play like three across the front or play two strikers and a number 10, I would play quite narrow. We all had a, had a debate, really, and we came out with a formula that got the job done. Well, we've got, we, I thought we would have been the fifth penalty in two weeks, wouldn't it, or three weeks, I think. Um, the boys are saying it was never a penalty in a million years. Yeah, it was obviously offside. Um, I think they'd have been pretty disappointed. I haven't seen it. Whether you've seen it on the TV, whether you thought it was a penalty, they're all saying it was almost comical to think it was a penalty, but... Um, it doesn't matter now, does it? We're talking about the history books, 1-0. Right, listen, we've talked, we've talked about losing a 93rd-minute goal against Aston Villa and a 93rd-minute goal against Ipswich Town. Stick another four points on our total and, you know, but I'm, I'm, that's, not, that's not greedy because we also clawed a 0-0 against uh, Derby, really. Um, so, all right, it's a good start. I think it's given us a platform to see how we do, but as I say, we'll rely a lot on the spirit of this group. We have to be better with the ball than we showed today. Um, but, yeah, we, we've done OK, I think. Honestly. Yeah, it's, um, I think that's really, really important for this football club, and it's something I try and stress to the players. They have to try and create an affinity with the supporters. They have to go in the community. They have to try and buy some goodwill back by... Putting there, as you know, I've, I've told you before, I call it exposing the soul. They have to show the fans that they care and they want to play for the team, and um, and then they should celebrate with the fans when they win. Now, what has gone on around the grounds in the championship? Take a little look. Uh, Leeds were held to a 1 1 draw on Friday night, or was it early? It was an early kickoff, actually. Um, so their progress at the top kind of stalls a little bit. Uh, one of the clashes of the day, Middlesbrough up against Nottingham Forest, ending with a 2 0 away win for Nottingham Forest. They also saw a man sent off. Preston finally got a big win under the belt. 4 0 winners over Wigan. Uh, West Brom as well continue their flight up the table. 4 1 winners at, uh, against Reading. Uh, Norwich uh, were lost to Stoke. Our next opponents are Leeds. We all talked about that. Uh, Villa continued their bit of a slippy slope. Uh, they lost to Millwall. Um, well, Birmingham had a big old win against Rotherham. Now, what has that done to the table? As you can see, we are flying high in ninth spot. As for our opposition, Bolton now are in 16th spot. But it is so, so tight. We're looking at three points separating uh, 16th all the way up to 6th. So that's how tight it is. And a win for us in our next game. And we could be in the playoffs. But uh, that is a long way away. And look at the top of the table. It's Sheffield United currently flying high in first spot. Uh, West Brom are in second. Leeds third. Middlesbrough fourth. Notts Forest fifth. And Brentford occupy the last playoff spot. As for the bottom, Preston, Ipswich and Hull are rooted in the old relegation zone. How about what's going to happen next time out? Obviously, we've talked about it already. We do take on Leeds on Saturday, the 20th of October. That's an early kickoff. 7 a.m. for me. Uh, probably around about 12 uh, uh, o'clock in the afternoon for you guys. Also taking place that weekend, Aston Villa against Swansea. Not so long ago, that was a Premier League game. As was Wigan versus West Brom. That's also on the board. Uh, Bolton will be taking on Rotherham. Again, it's look like that could be a valuable six-pointer right there. Between Rotherham and Bolton, Notts Forest will take on uh, Norwich. And who else we got? Where's North End? North End taking on Hull. Another bottom of the table scrap. Now, I've got no fan input today. I've actually had no joy this whole week trying to get our Bolton fans to give me their point of view. But anyway, let's take a look at what went on on social media. Here's some of the players. Elliot Bennett uh, said this. Wasn't a pretty game today, but what a win and great to go into the international break with three points. We have played better this season and drew, so I'm buzzing. Fantastic sport once again. At Rovers. Meanwhile, Harrison Reed said this. Get in there. Massive three points going into the international break. Huge support once again. And Daryl Lenehan on the same vein. Massive three points this evening. Lads had to dig deep until the end. Brad Dax on fire. Chap can't stop scoring. And Derek Williams said this. Great way to mark my 100th Rovers appearance with three points. Weren't our greatest, but another clean sheet and win. How uh, about some of the fans? Well, Sully said this. Yes, we held on few. All the boys and the manager with great assurance said we'd come back post Wednesday night and they were right had to dig and fight uh, had to show grit and we sure did it uh, meanwhile Kelly Moran said this great win la today lads good spot from la uh, the linesman my ticker can't take them last minute decisions meanwhile Andrew Wilding said this good win and dig 
out heels in for that one. Uh, good statement after midweek. Come on, Rovers. Hashtag Rovers now. James Marshall uh, said this, and that's the where the old intro comes from. Bradley. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going there again. I've I've done it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Jack Rovers 25 said this. Ugly but a clean sheet. An overdue win at the Breeze Block. Come on, you Blues. As for Jordan Kingsley, good win, but woeful second half. It's if it's not broke, don't fix it. How about these bad boys? We got Mike Delap said this. Early days, but Jack Rodwell looks far from the low risk failure we imagined was probably the case might play a decent part with him on a short-term incentivized arrangement meanwhile uh, Stuart MacArthur said this poor second half but a bloody good win hashtag Rovers David Royal Martins snuck in there massive three points and a clean sheet of course fantastic uh, fans were brilliant as always as Lewis Halliday said this cheers for the heart problems lads and Rovers obviously they uh keep us up to date with the old Twitter but so was Carl Fogarty in there the old uh Superstar motorcyclist Rovers fan. Meanwhile, there's a few Rovers lads currently out on loan with some other clubs. Take a look at those at the moment at Port Vale, where they lost 2-0 to Grimsby. Lewis Harcaster was leading the line up front, but unfortunately he was on the receiving end of a 2-0 defeat. Meanwhile, over in the Bloomfield Road, uh, Black Blackpool up against Rochdale and Sam Hart was at the left-back spot for Rochdale as they claimed a point. So that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a good old thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, smash the old subscribe button to keep you banging today with all things Blackburn Rovers related, Championship related, World Football related. We've got it all here under one roof. Uh, also, check out the old description. Links to my other social media platforms are in there. Twitter, Facebook, they are all in there. What else have I got for you? Yeah, let me hear your thoughts and opinions in the old comment section below about the result. What that's done for Rovers. What's it done for Bolton? What's going to happen in the game against Leeds, which we'll be previewing in a few days time boys and girls it's break time for me it's international break so i can have a little bit of a rest but don't worry there's a lot of content still coming out I've still got my old fifa 19 stuff my football manager you know bad fm that's still rocking and rolling but also uh just a sneak peek the uh, blackburn rovers walkout jacket has arrived so we're going to be doing a uh review of that bad boy uh probably in about 24 hours or so so Stick around for that bad boy. But yeah, but yeah, monstrous win to get one over Bolton. It has, it's been a while since we won at their gaff. Um, so yeah, and it, feel, it feels good. It feels good, especially going into this break. Now we can kind of prepare, think a little bit. Because in the next game, the next few games are pretty rough looking. I think Leeds, Leeds are next. We've got West Brom, we've got Swansea. So there's, there's, there's three teams that should be top 10 Top six material, and we gotta we gotta dig our heels deep, and uh, and like like people have been saying, and just keep on chipping away. Anyway, I'm getting out of here. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, Championship related, football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope.